Welcome back, ladies and germs, to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English size them, and then do 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 make funny noises. Do 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 do. I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and man in a giant lizard suit, Nicholas Tyson. Today we have another exciting installment of Kabashima and Oda's Shochan Adventures. In our previous episode, Squirrel and Sho got caught up in a sandstorm, were chased around by a mummy that was actually a skeleton, <laughs> and splashed some water onto monks. You can check out that episode on this channel, but for today we have... I I ikatata norimo. Ikatata norimo. <laughs> no, you read it from right to left, so it's Mori no Tatakai. Battle in the Forest. Sounds like a real banger, so let's get started. A voice cried out, Extra! Extra! to the sound of a ringing bell, and caused quite a stir. Extra! Extra! Asahi Shimbun Special Edition! Read all about it! Danger in the skies! People rushed from their homes to see what was causing all this commotion. What is it? What is it? And that's when they heard the news. Shochan's whereabouts were completely unknown. Is he gone? No, it can't be. Is he dead? The neighborhood children, having never been on adventures themselves, argued with one another about just how much danger there could possibly be. I sure am worried. Eh, it's not a big deal. And as they spoke, Shochan's plane was flying somewhere over Mongolia. That's when a sudden, mysterious whirlwind rose up from the Gobi Desert. I guess we're in the hands of fate now! The whirlwind tossed the plane about as if it were a mere dragonfly. And just like that, they were spirited away. All sight of the plane had been completely lost. Somewhere in the north of Siberia, there lay a forest that no human being had ever trespassed. And within that forest was a plain of grass like a small lake. And on that plain, a pair of cute little bunnies were playing. Mummy, are human beings scary animals? They indeed are frightening ones, but they are kind ones as well. While the bunnies were milling about, they heard a strange noise, and so they ran back into the woods. Hurry, my dear! Run! As they ran off, the noise came closer and closer. That's when a plane slipped past the shadow of the forest and began its descent. Once the plane landed and had come to a stop, Squirrel and Sho stepped out. First, they checked the machine over, after which they let out a deep sigh of relief. I guess we're all right! Man, what the heck happened back there? That said, they were stranded in the middle of nowhere without a drop of fuel in the tank. Wait, you're saying we can't get home? Well... Can't fly without any gas. They opened up a map to try and figure out where they were. This forest must be somewhere around here, I think. Sho decided to head off towards a town where they might be able to buy some gasoline. You know, we gotta do something. Gotta go somewhere. He slung his rifle over his shoulder and headed off south, alone, into the forest. Be sure to hurry back, Shochan. Will do. In the meanwhile, Squirrel, who'd been left behind to watch the plane, Man, sure is lonesome here. He waited for Sho to return for what seemed like days. Okay, I have to admit to a little um, translation malfeasance here. So it actually literally says ikunichika for some number of days, and there's no qualifier. There's no seeming. 
but several days don't actually pass in the text, so take that as you will. Why is it taking him so long to get back? One evening, it grew particularly cold, so Squirrel gathered up some wood and made himself a fire. It's late enough now, it's starting to get cold out. Squirrel crawled inside his blankie, and it wasn't long before he began to doze off. <laughs> munya, munya, munya. He didn't even notice the Siberian moon that hung overhead and lit up the forest. That's when a crowd of singing voices could be heard emanating from the forest. In the shadow of a forest, so dark, so dark, a pair of eyes open, so red, so red. Young girls with wings appeared and danced around Squirrel. Long ago, long ago, a long time ago, a tale of so long ago. Then one of their numbers suddenly shrieked, and, in a panic, they all disappeared back into the forest. <coughs> a monstrous creature burst forth from the tree line. A ceratosaurus! <laughs> yep, it was literally a ceratosaurus. The creature wriggled its snout, and when it saw the airplane, it let out a horrifying yawp. <coughs> At this bone-chilling sound, Squirrel opened his eyes and leapt up, now fully aware of the gravity of his situation. I, I, it's, it's a monster! The creature jumped into the air and brought its tail down whack onto Squirrel, knocking him unconscious. <laughs> and with Squirrel so easily vanquished, the Ceratosaurus took no further interest in him. Instead, it turned its attention back to the plane and swept its body up over the rudder. It seized the airplane by the tail and disappeared back into the woods. The Siberian night gave way to dawn, and to the east the sky was growing brighter. One could hear the neighing of horses, a sign that Sho had returned. He brought with him on the back of one of the horses a pair of full gas cans. Sho looked down at the grass where Squirrel had fallen and where their airplane no longer lay. Squirrel! No! Sho was shocked to hear what Squirrel told him had transpired. Please be alive, Squirrel! Uh, Sho, there was this monster... Sho listened to his story and immediately picked up his gun. Well, I'm going to show it who's boss. As he rode off to retrieve the plane, Sho heard a rustling in the forest. What it is that? His horse reared back violently at sight of the creature's return. Whoa there, whoa! D there it is! Sho fired his gun but the bullet bounced pew, off its hide. Bullets aren't going to take this one down. When he realized his gun couldn't hurt the creature, Sho drew his sword instead. I, I guess this will have to do. Sho took a swing at the Ceratosaurus, but the blade just snapped back. It's no good. We gotta run, Sho. Little by little, the creature backed them into a corner. Come on, Sho! Into the woods! Into the woods! Unexpectedly, a huge mammoth appeared from out behind them. Do 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 do. <laughs> ah! Another monster! When the mammoth and the ceratosaurus noticed one another, they stood at an uneasy distance. Do 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 do. As Squirrel and Sho stood to one side, the two monstrous creatures engaged in a terrible battle. 
Okay, I can't do an elephant noise. As the earth trembled with their kicks and swipes, the trees of the forest were tumbling to the ground. They fought and they fought as their shapes disappeared back through the tree line. Sho took in this horrific sight, and as he did so, the heart in his chest slowed to a crawl, and his spirit fled from him. Y you okay, Sho? Squirrel was in a bit of a panic as he looked after Sho, but then he heard a song coming from the forest. Someone's coming! The winged girls from earlier were dragging the plane back into the clearing. Open your eyes, little show. We brought back your dragonfly. So they're not they're not dumb. Um, in, <laughs> so there is a type of Japanese biplane called a called a dragonfly, called a red dragonfly, actually, Akatombo. Actually, Akatombo can also just be whatever. Together, the winged girls all danced around Show's body. Oh wait, ah, again, production values. Open your eyes, little show. We pop back your dragonfly. <laughs> Together, the winged girls all danced around Show's body. The old lady of the forest told us to bring you a present. Literally, Omiyage. Their song opened Show's eyes, and he sat up. Ah, uh, you mean that wasn't all a dream? I'm so glad you're okay, Show. He gathered up the gas cans they'd kindly returned to him. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. Squirrel and Show took a moment to dance with each of the girls. Let's have a dance before we go. I'm great at the waltz. And at long last, Squirrel and Show boarded their plane and took off heading south. So long! Yeah, see you later, sisters! After their ordeal, another special edition went to press. Extra! Extra! The people of the town caught sight of the newsies as they were bustling about. Just two cents! Two cents per copy! <laughs> Go, Kaya's <laughs> Oh, I oh I guess I forgot to translate that dude's line. So he's like, yeah, he's calling them over. Cool guy, us on, yeah, newspaper man, newspaper man, or special edition boy, newspaper boy. Oh, anyway, I lost my place. Show had been spotted flying over Paris in the night. My oh my, show made it all the way to Paris. The boys and girls in the street all breathed a collective sigh of relief. You see, it was a pretty big deal after all. I wonder what his next adventure will be. And scene. <laughs> I wonder what his next adventure will be, too. Actually, I, I know, because I've already translated it. I just haven't recorded it yet. Anyway, that's all for this week's episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really liked this video, you can support my work on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga, all one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I'll be back next week with another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, but until then, don't let the man get you down. Bye.